Today I'm going to help you to get closure or get over just about anything with just a paper and a pen. But before we get started on this, you're going to have no more cavities. Excited? Yeah. Yeah. Your last dentist appointment. Daddy, film when they get inside my mouth. Oh. I did last time. <laughs> you had some fun stuff in your mouth? Oh, she can't talk. Leave it, leave it. Oh, let me ask you something. If you were a parent, would you rather get parenting advice from another parent that has good kids or from someone that learned all about parenting by reading books and they know everything about it and they're an expert about raising children but they don't have any kids of their own. Who, who do you think is going to be better at teaching you or from learning from? Will it be the person that already did it successfully or the person that knows a lot about it? Well, you see, that's what the problem is these days with therapy and going to the doctors and doing all that kind of stuff. Throughout my whole life, I have found that the best way to get good at anything is learning from somebody that's good at it. Mentorship is much more effective in helping you than the experts that know everything because the experts that know everything have read books about it. Someone said something really, really nice to me. I've always loved your content. It's brought me so much joy. Thank you for not giving up because you are making a difference in this crazy world. Thank you for bringing some joy into my life for so long. Since I lost my mom two years ago, I don't feel much joy anymore. And first of all, thank you, Alyssa, for your kind words. And second of all, I'm sorry for your loss. Many of us deal with loss in many different ways. We do want to be able to kind of deal with it. We can't just forget it. We, ha we, have, to, uh, we have to let it out. Now, uh, emotions are meant to be felt temporarily. When you go and you eat a delicious meal, yum, and you enjoy it, but you don't think about it the rest of your life. <laughs> it doesn't cycle through your head. Uh, if, if you have a friend that gives you $20, you appreciate it, but you don't really think about it every time you see that friend. Oh my goodness, there's the friend that gave me $20. But when something bad happens to us, a friend steals $5. $5 is four times less than 20. But every time we see them, it's like, that's the person that stole $5 from me. And then maybe a year goes by, you forgive them and whatever. And then something's missing and you were hanging out with them. You can't help but to think about that friend who stole from you in the past. It's like, you, you, it's, it's ingrained in you. And with negative things, we tend to cycle them. We don't hold on to positive things as much and cycle them and go through over and over again and relive that joy. But for some reason, we like to hold on to sadness. And this can be for so many different things. Uh, someone we love dies and we didn't get to tell them what we felt. And now we forever live in regret that it's like, I wish that I was, had more time or that I knew so that I could tell them this. And it can, it can really cause you problems. For me as a child, it seems silly, but going through a breakup, uh, the first time like I went through a breakup, my heart felt like it was broken and I cried almost every night for three years. That's not normal. That's not something that you should do. And what I did was I replayed all of it. And from the beginning, when it was just like a week ago, I was like, just a week ago, she was my girlfriend and we were together and everything was good. Why can't I go back? And just a month ago, why can't I go back? And we romanticize and we relive these pasts. And it's easy to do that in our head. So we can do it over and over and over again. And we're not able to get it out. Let's say you've been through trauma. Say someone raped you. 
and you can't stop thinking about it and and it replays over and over and over again now i don't want to belittle any of the pain that you feel or tell you that this is going to 100 percent work but this is what works for me and everyone that i've told that's done it has had success with it the only people that haven't had success with it have not done it and to me it's as effective as being active. If, if you are active and you work out, you're gonna get muscles, you're gonna get fit. If you don't, then you won't. And you can go on a crazy extreme regimen or you can just be consistent. And if you're slowly consistent, you're gonna get better. I've gone to therapy from the time I was a child. I was in therapists, psychologists, psychiatrists, medications, and I was one of those troubled kids. None of them really helped me. I learned about how the mind worked because of the things that they studied and said to me, but the solutions that I found was through coming up with my own. <laughs> so here is my solution for getting over anyone and anything. All you have to do is get a paper and a pen. It's gonna take you 30 days and you have to do it. You have to do it every single day. You can't skip a day. If you skip a day, you're, you're cheating, and if you cheat, it's not going to work. And that means that you don't actually want help. And nobody can help you unless you want it. So that's the first thing. You have to want to get over whatever it is that you're, you're dealing with. Most of the time, it has to do with somebody else. You're mad at someone. You're hurt by someone. You can't stop thinking about someone. Or it's, it's a thing, you know, you lost your job or... Something like that. There's something that's plaguing you and it's stuck on repeat. And it's easy to do it in your head. But for 30 days, every single night before you go to bed, you need to pull out a line piece of paper and a pen. And let's say that you have issues with missing your ex-girlfriend. So you can't get over your ex-girlfriend. Every night for 30 days, you write down Dear Jennifer, I miss you so much. And you express all your feelings. You tell her everything that you're feeling as if you're talking to Jennifer, as if you're still together, or even like you're not. You, you just express everything that you're feeling. Remember that time when we were smooching in the bushes and it was so romantic. Oh my goodness, remember our trip to Latvia. It was the greatest thing we ever did. And I miss it so much. And I miss you and your lips, they're so tender. Blah, 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 blah. And you pour yourself out. You do that tonight. You do that tomorrow night. You do it every night. Maybe you don't wanna to talk to Jennifer one night. So you say, Jennifer, I'm not in the mood to talk to you today. And that's it for the day. You did it. Then the next night, Jennifer, I miss you so much. I love you. I, I, I don't know why you left me. Or I'm so sorry for doing that. I'm so sorry that I screwed up. I'm so sorry that I did this. I'm such an idiot, whatever. You get it all out every single day for 30 days. And the reason that this is so effective and important, you're already doing this every day, every night in your head. You're wondering why you're thinking about all these feelings and feeling them. But it's easy to do that. As soon as you make it just a little bit more difficult by writing it down, your brain sees you doing it. Your brain sees you writing and you realize, oh, I'm writing, I don't wanna write, this is stupid or whatever. But you just do it for 30 days and there's, there's two things that happen. You see yourself doing it and you actually realize that you kinda don't wanna do it anymore. But the other thing is that all those feelings that are trapped inside you, you poured out, you got them out with a pen, you wrote them down, and it's like basically expelling toxins from stuck inside your body. It's like you just, like bloodletting, <laughs> like you just drain it all out. And then it's not stuck inside you anymore. You got to say whatever it is that you had to say to that person that you miss, to that person that you hate, to that person that you love. Whatever it is, those feelings that are trapped inside you, this is a way that you can get it out and, and it works. It's any time that there's been something very difficult for me to get through, I've gone back to this and it's cured me. Let's say it is a loved person is gone now 
and you want to talk to them. So you talk to them every night for 30 days. By the time 30 days are done, you most likely won't really want to talk to them anymore. So it's really curing, it's really healing, and it, it, will, it will help you. And I'd, I'd love to hear about your experiences with doing this. I'm, I'm sure that that will help you. We know that people don't want to hear negative stuff. We all have these problems and I'm going through sadness because of my motorcycles. It's not what you think because did you, did you actually think that that was gonna be the solution? Lots of people think paper and a pen and write a diary, but when you write a diary, you're just saying what happened today. That, it might help you, it might be good for you, but to me, it's not, writing a diary is like keeping track of stuff. And we don't need to keep track of stuff. We need to let go of stuff. We need to express everything that's trapped inside us. So that's why it's very different from writing a diary. And you're not actually ever gonna give these letters or writings to anyone. You're not gonna give them to that person. When you watch a movie, you know exactly how the person screwed up. You know exactly what they should do to make it better. But for some reason, when it happens in our lives, we lots of the time know the answer, but we don't do it. So a big thing that can help you is view yourself in the third person and do what you're supposed to do. Do the right thing. Don't let emotions get in the way. And anyone can do that. People say, oh, it's harder than you think. So let's say you're gonna get a job and they tell you that there's a black dress code. How long does it take for you to learn the dress code? Pretty fast. <laughs> Because <laughs> if you don't, you lose your job. You see, when we know that there's concrete consequences, we adjust pretty quickly. How long does it take for you to learn not to touch a pot of boiling coffee? <laughs> like, you, you can do it. It's, it's very easy to learn these things. But with emotional stuff, for some reason, we don't look at it like that. We don't look at it like, I'm not going to do this because this hurts. It just shows that... We, we know what we can and can't do, what we shouldn't do because it will hurt us. But for some reason, emotionally, we often know what we shouldn't do. You shouldn't go back to this abusive person. But in our heart, we feel something else. Oh, maybe it'll change. Maybe it'll get better. But, but that's not the right choice. Maybe it's the emotional choice. And when you see a movie, you know what the person should do. So that's a great way for you to know what you should do. View yourself in the third person. What should you do? And then do it. And that's not saying that it's easy. It could be extremely hard. It could cost you everything. But you know what to do. Start doing it. This exercise will help you. So I would really like for you to try it. And will let me know. Come back in 30 days and tell me what happened. I'd love to hear your stories, and I hope that helps some of you. If you're struggling with these kind of things, or you have a kid that has problems, I am not a therapist, I'm not allowed to be, but I can be a mentor, and I will charge you a hundred bucks an hour. If you think that's worth it, I can work with you. Yes. Good job. Yeah, am I, am I worth a hundred bucks an hour? Yes. Are you a good kid? Yes. Can I help people raise their kids to be good kids? Yes. Well, only if they listen, right? Yes. Just like you. Mm -hmm. Do you listen? Yes. Now go to your room. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yes. I sit over here on the floor with my back against the couch, so I'm comfy. And then I have my headphones here in case it's nighttime and I'm editing. And the keyboard, mouse, TV. I sit here and I spend about an hour at night and then an hour in the morning to make sure that these videos are edited nicely. Even five minute videos take me at least two hours to make. I want to be able to give you more than just footage. I want to be able to share emotion and the story. And as I'm sitting here editing today's, today's video, I'm looking at my motorcycle and I'm really sad. <laughs> I just felt like crying, so. I stopped for a bit, I'm like, time to express emotions. This motorcycle is not like just a motorcycle to me, it's, 
It's so special. I've had it since before I got married. I've had such good times on it. It's my first 600cc bike. It's like a race bike. I remember the first time I got on it how happy I was. Like I was just like, wow, the power. It's so powerful that it feels so light. It had a lot of things that had to be done on it. I built a hair salon by dressing up as a superhero and going out and giving people haircuts on the streets. And from this, five years later after doing this, uh, one of my customers' mom makes documentaries. She made the documentary on Netflix about sugar being poison and whatever, and I forget what it's called. But she reached out to me and made a documentary about me. I got $500 for it, and it wasn't, I don't know what kind of budget it was anyways. We wanted to get it into hot dogs. They didn't take it. I, I think tip two, where two people said yes and one person said no. So it never made it into that. It made it into other film festivals. It was just awesome because I got to go to New York and I, I got to go to Calgary and go to these film festivals. They fixed up my motorcycle for me. So they spent like a thousand dollars getting me new tires and new uh, chains. And like, just, they made it really nice for me. It was like having a fresh mo motorcycle and I've driven it now for like 10 years so I've got my mileage out of it like I, it's been such a good bike I just changed the spark plugs on it I just changed the starter so many things have done to this bike changed the he fret headlight just gone through everything with this bike and it's just been kind of like like part of me and it's just when I'm on the motorcycle nothing kind of makes me feel that way it's like and flying the drones too, when I fly them, it's amazing. But when I'm on my bike going on the highway and just feeling the air and being able to do everything, it's just, I have my dream bike and it's only like a few thousand dollars bike. It's, they're giving me two grand for it, but I've put at least two grand into it. And if you have a motorcycle, you know, you put money into it here and there. So it just doesn't represent really what it's worth. And more than that, just, I drove it to Ohio. I drove it to Montreal. Like I got on a sports bike and went on two five hour journeys. We've gone through so much together and it's just, it's, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to ride it anymore. And that is just, it's depressing. Like it's, it's very sad. I just wanted to express that. So a stranger smashed into my bike and now I can't afford to replace it. It's just terrible. Like, it's just terrible. I don't want a pile of things. I just want to be able to work and make a living. And just lately it's been rough. I've worked so hard to build my hair salon for 20 years. And before COVID I was doing great. And then COVID came. I'm not even really getting by. I'm going a little bit more and a little bit more debt every single month. If my salon doesn't get busy by the time winter comes, I'm going to lose my salon next. So I like, I want to keep this a positive thing. It's just, it's, it's, it's a bit of a bad day. It's a bit of a sad day. If, if you can just progress a little bit every day, if you can just get a little bit better every day, like that's that's all you got to do and that's what I'm trying to do you know work out every day and and be positive and work on this and do good things like if you can just do good things then hopefully things you know get better things just keep getting worse you know and it's like it's, it can always get better it can always get worse and I just really hope that it gets better and if, if you're going through hard times too don't give up right like it's so easy to give up it's so easy to quit it's so easy to just say I'm not gonna do this anymore but it's just, instead, what am I doing? I'm doing this, I'm grinding and grinding. Sometimes it feels like it's for nothing. I've been making videos now for three years, almost every single day. Not this vlog, but like just overall the channels. And that's kind of why I decided I'm gonna stop doing all that, I'm gonna focus on this. I think that this is the most real thing that I can put out there. And yeah, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you look very nice tonight, Mama. In the uh, in the dim of the night. Ooh. Where is... you can't see cellulite. <laughs> <laughs> Your daughter wants to be in the picture. What do you want to say, baby? Guys, don't forget to subscribe and watch our videos if you haven't yet. <laughs> 
You little attention fiend. <laughs> I'm close, you're doing it. Okay, you're helping me frame the shot, okay? Bring the chair, there you go, now sit. Now if I sit, is it gonna cut my head off or are we gonna be good or are we gonna be somewhere good? 